Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. A crucial encounter took centre stage in Group F as Portugal and Germany faced off. The tie was particularly important for Germany, who wanted at least a point, as many of the other best third place sides look on course for at least four. In the end, the thrilling match ended 4 2 to Germany, thanks to Diaz and Guerrero's own goals, as well as Havertz and Gerson's, whilst Ronaldo and Jota netted for Portugal. The XG may look close, but only because own goals don't count towards the XG. But what tactics did both managers use? Let's take a look. And just before then, you may also be interested in these two videos exploring how Germany revamped their coaching and youth systems to produce elite players and coaches, and they will be linked down below, as well as at the end of this video. A quick reminder of the formations, with Germany sticking to their 3-4-3 and Portugal their 4-2-3-1 on paper. Let's start with Germany in possession, as they were much more proactive with their 58% possession. Germany for the most part were able to build up short from the back due to having several numbers deep and Portugal were not always willing to press that high. This could involve Ginter and Rudiger splitting to the width of the box whilst Hummels would temporarily become an extra pivot, so Germany would outnumber Portugal in these early phases. But generally, Portugal were much happier to sit in a deep or mid block and for the most part they looked to protect the centre of the pitch with a 4-2-3-1 being more of a 4-1-4-1 when defending, with Fernandes dropping deeper into the midfield. And they looked to remain quite narrow, making it difficult to find men by playing through the centre. In addition, when Gundogan or Kroos in particular got on the ball, one of the central midfielders could easily break rank to apply pressure. So, Germany mainly attacked through the flanks, and were incredibly effective in doing so, with Gersens and Kimmich pushing extremely high and wide to provide all the width, whilst the central three were rotating in perpetual motion, making them harder to track. And in this match, Portugal generally struggled due to the fact that their back four was often outnumbered against this front five. So, Germany could overload the left hand side with the pivots moving wide to join the wing back, whilst the front three had also shifted across. Crucially, the right winger would often stay in the half space to force Guerrero to remain narrower, whilst Ginter could advance into the midfield. So, for the most part, Jota wouldn't be tracking the wing back, meaning that Germany could easily switch it to Kimmich either directly or through Müller first, or even through Ginter if he was free in the midfield. This even leads to an early disallowed goal. But this could happen vice versa by first overloading the right hand side. In the first phase, only Ronaldo was pressing, so Germany wouldn't need the spare third centre back. So they often pushed Ginter higher on the right hand side, and the near side pivot, Kimmich and the two forwards would create an overload on the right, which would then free Gersens to make the late run into the box, which we saw a lot of. But one reason Germany was so effectively able to outnumber Portugal high up was by manipulating Portugal's wingers on either side. In their default shapes, Portugal's wingers cover shadows would have been able to cover Germany's wingbacks, which would then allow Portugal's fullback to stay narrower, negating that advantage. But Germany's wide centre backs when on the ball would often draw the Portugal winger higher, meaning that their fullback was now 2 versus 1 down, allowing Germany to combine in the final line. All of these factors show up in Germany's goals. For the first, Jota has been higher up on Ginter, and we see Portugal's narrow midfield three. But this now means that Müller and Kimmich can have a 2 vs 1 situation out wide, meaning that Müller can receive in turn. Kimmich's width begins the overload as Nabri and Havertz move infield. This means that Semedo is now quite narrow. So Kimmich can get the cross into Gersens at the back post, and he's free due to Silva also being generally slow to track back when on the pitch. His cross come shot leads to the goal. For the second, we see Muller's narrow position has forced Semedo infield. 
Initially, Silver's positioning makes it harder to find the pass into Gerson's, but Rudiger advances and draws Silver, creating the angle to find Gerson's. Samedo now has to move to find Gerson's, freeing Muller to receive the ball. His cross eventually leads to another goal. And, as you can see, the opposite side wing-back Kimmich was also keen to attack the box. For the third, we see Ronaldo as the only man pressing high, so Hummels and Rudiger form a two, allowing Ginter higher on the right-hand side. Jota is drawn to Ginter, meaning that Havertz and Muller have a two versus one against Guerrero in the final line. Havertz receives, drawing Guerrero, so now Muller is free in the half space. Kimmich and Nabri narrow, have forced a meadow narrow, and Sanchez is slow to track. Gersons is in acres of space and finds Havertz. Again, Ginter high on the right has drawn Jota. Sanchez looking to press Gundogan means that there's now space in the midfield. Muller is found drawing Diaz and we see that Kimmich high and wide had tied up Guerrero, giving Havertz a bit more space. Guerrero moves central to cover, so Kimmich now has space out wide, and Gersons as ever is attacking the back post to finish. We'll touch on a couple of elements when Portugal were in possession. When they were deep on the ball, Germany's pressing shape could vary. The two wide men tended to tuck in onto the centre-backs, whilst the false nine dropped onto the pivot. And Portugal could shift to a double pivot to help alleviate this pressure by providing an extra option, whilst also getting Bruno between the lines. However, one of Germany's pivots would be easily able to move forward to cover this. This did make building through the centre tricky at times. So Portugal would often let to play down the flanks, and at times Germany were reluctant to push Kimmich up to press, as it would leave Ginter 1 vs 1 against the pacier and trickier Jota. But when they were chasing the game, they looked to do this more, with the pivot being sure to cut off any central options. But higher up the pitch, the natural concern for Germany would have been that there would have been 3 vs 2 down in the midfield. But by having Nabri deep at times, that evened things up. Alternatively, Rudiger, as we have often seen him with Chelsea, was aggressive in marking any midfielders drifting between the lines, thus evening things up. Overall, it was a convincing win for Germany, as they showed much more attacking impetus and now look in an excellent position to qualify. But still, nothing is guaranteed, as Hungary have shown themselves to be a good team. Portugal will be disappointed with their poorest defensive showing, and have a tough final day fixture. But what did you make of this match though? Drop it down below. And if you want even more content, whilst helping to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash footballmadesimple. You'll get early access to videos, exclusive videos, as well as access to the upcoming FMS video podcast. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.